Well, Liam, we're, we're back in the, the pool where it all started for you. And weirdly for me, I had my first ever international down here, so it's yeah. nice stories for me, but we're sitting underneath this board. Does yeah, it yeah. bring back good memories? It does. Well, funnily enough, I don't speak, think it started in this pool. It started in the pool just over there, the teaching pool. So I must have I've been less than one in nappies. I came for my first ever swim in the, in the learner pool wow. just over there. And then it wasn't long before I came in here in armbands. And then I think, uh, much to the behest of the lifeguards, I used to jump off this diving <laughs> board with armbands on and my dad used to be here to catch me and I think uh, we got into a bit of trouble for that. So I was uh, yeah, running around like the crazy uh, uh, hyperactive child that I was and couldn't keep still. So this was just a, an amazing playground for me where I got my um, introduction to aquatics. I think. No fear. Is that a skill that you have to have with diving that you have to be a little bit oblivious to it? I used to share yeah. a fact with Suzanne Dander. She used to say <laughs> to me with gymnastics, it got frightening the moment they worked out that they could yeah. fall off the beach. Yeah, so completely. So when I started diving, I didn't start diving properly until just before I was nine. And at that point, I was fearless. And, it, and I was fearless all the way until I was ten and a half. And then when I was ten and a half, I was doing a forward two and a half somersaults off this diving board here, the five meter. And I ended up getting a little bit disorientated, which is quite normal in diving. I ended up doing this, flat on my back, full body, you know, back crash. So what we call that diving, a wipeout. And I tell you what, I have never been in so much pain. And there's a 10 year old, okay, it's 11, just, there's, there's a moment where you hit and then it just all goes silent and then the pain rushes in. So you could imagine being slapped, but just all over your entire body. And that was a key moment really, because then that's when I completely lost my confidence. I suddenly realized how dangerous it was yeah. and that I could really hurt myself and that I had really hurt myself. And then for probably the next six months, I had to work with my diving coach then, Dave Turner at the time, and I used to be a chicken, you know, and he used to have to kind of go, what are, you know, what are you doing? He used to be, you know, so and I used so to be like- quite apprehensive. Completely, and then I had to work closely with the coach to build the confidence again. And so that certainly slowed my, my progress down for those six months. And then you've always got that in mm. the back of mind. I don't think it was much longer before I was on this board, the three meter board, and um, I was messing around. I was looking at my friend behind me, he was waiting to go, and I managed to, to miss the end of the diving board and I thought oh no I'm going to scrape my back so I arched my back and of course hit my head on the diving board um, so I had to go to a hospital to check that I hadn't done any 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 more damage or whatever. Probably didn't so notice it. Yeah <laughs> probably not. No, I've got a little lump there to remind me. <laughs> so what were mum and dad who were obviously yeah. your biggest supporters yeah. thinking whilst all of this was going on did they ever try to persuade you to try some other sport that was slightly less dangerous? Yeah I don't know so <laughs> I always remember my mum, because someone had to take me to training, so diving training uh, would take place uh, every afternoon, and I remember my mum would sit in, the, sit in the balcony there, and she would, uh, at the time it was a metal railing, and every time I would do a dive, especially a dive that would mean I would be moving towards the diving board, so an inward or a reverse, um, I would hear like this, king, king, and, I'd, be like, and I, I'd never know what it was, and it was my mum <laughs> grabbing hold of the bar in terror of me coming close to the diving board. I never realised what it was until years later that it was this at home. So I think they would have loved uh, for me to do something um, you know, a, a little bit safer if there is such a thing. But again, they uh, right from the word go, they just allowed me to engage in any activity that I would, I was stimulated in, and, and I would, I was, I would enjoy. And they wouldn't ever keep me in an activity that I didn't enjoy. So there's many sports that I tried very briefly, or I tried something one. I got to the point where I was, oh, I, I don't like this, and they wouldn't kind of go, oh well, you know, we've you know invested yeah. all this time or money or energy. They would just go, okay, if you don't like it, that's fine. And so I had this kind of scatter approach where I tried everything and, and the things that stuck, you know, the swimming, the gymnastics and ultimately the diving were the ones that I enjoyed the most and I think, you know, uh, I, I know if I was tennis, golf or football I'd be, you know, with millions, wouldn't I? But it was the, we the all sport. have that problem. Well it's interesting isn't it? So it wasn't like, oh no, I think you should do football because you can make a career out of it. It was like, well, if you're not being a pain in the backside to us, great. And if it means <laughs> leaping off one of these and you know, hitting the water then, then so, so be it. What sort of profile did diving have in those days? Because We'd obviously yeah. had, we'd had some success kind of in mm. the 60s and the 70s, but then it had yeah. gone quiet again, hadn't it? Sure. And then you and Pete came along mm. and won our first Olympic medal for a very long time. Yeah, yeah that's right. So 2004, so it's the first Olympic medal for 44 years. Um, so at the time, diving was, you know, as it is now, even, you know, it's a minority sport. The facilities, you know, you can't just go down the local, you know, local park and, you know, and take part in it. So you need to come to a, a, a proper facility. There needs yeah. to be a club there. You need proper coaching. So, and, and it, you know, we've already alluded to it. It, it, it doesn't take the masses. There's 
there's only a few uh, people, smaller percentage of the population who would actually enjoy you know, putting themselves through that <laughs> terror, if you like, sometimes in overcoming the fear. So, I mean, I guess at the time when I started diving, you know, Greg Luganis, you know, was the, uh, uh, the greatest diver on the planet. And he's most famous for hitting his head on the yeah. diving board in 1988 at the Seoul Olympic Games. So diving was famous for hitting your head on the diving board. And that's the sport I was involved in as, uh, you know, at the time when the 88 Games when I was 11 years old and, and glued to the screen, obviously, because that was, uh, you know, a sport which I just started. And so I'm watching the world's greatest diver hit his head on the diving board thinking, <laughs> oh, oh this, is, this is a great sport. <laughs> <laughs> so at this stage, how much training are actually you, are you doing? I mean, mm. is that up in the mornings? Or are you in the pool twice yeah. a day? Yeah. How much of your life has been taken over by yeah. your sport? And yeah. when did it become yeah. you know, so serious that everything else was going by the by? Yeah. Well, it's interesting really because uh, my uh, as a 10 year old because of the three sports I was combining 10 and 11 um, my training regime was was unbelievably busy so I was uh, swimming every morning so that would be uh, six till eight um, over yeah, in, remember uh, those? yeah six till eight and then in the afternoons I would then be either doing gymnastics diving and swimming or a combination of the two or one so that would be every evening and then Saturday as you know would either be a swimming gala or a gymnastics competition or a diving competition a Sunday would either be one of those or half days rest and so it was this incredibly busy program trying to combine three sports and I managed to do it to the point where uh, just as I was starting senior school so 11 years old I was uh, 16th in the country for the 100 backstroke for, for, uh, for under 12 swimming uh, gymnastics at the NDPs as they were called I was fourth and diving I'd managed to get myself a bronze but also a gold in the in the one meter springboard and it got to the point where I'm starting senior school and I'm doing all these three sports at national level and I'm pretty much about to, you know, to, well I think I'm doing fine and, and I probably was but I, I think the point was you can't fit any more in and something's got to give. Yeah. My parents were always great about school, you know, and the fact that, you know, that was the most education, most important thing. And uh, if my education started to suffer, or more you know, specifically, if I started to mess around or not put any effort in, they would start to remove my sporting privileges. And so I'd obviously push my luck and they would remove it and I'd have to try harder at school. So they were ingenious in the way that they managed to work that. But it came to the point where I needed to make a decision if I wanted to stay competing at that level, that kind of national level. Uh, and it was mainly between gymnastics and diving because they were the ones that were clashing. So there was like gymnastics needed to be five times a week, so did diving, but there was only five nights in the week that I could combine them. So it was uh, a conversation that my dad actually had with my diving coach and my gymnastics coach, and they both said the same thing. If Leon wants to continue at this high level, you know, being top four in the, in the UK and wants to go to the Olympic Games, as, as he's quite openly shared, that's his ambition, his yeah. goal, then, uh, then he's going to need to choose because he needs to start training more in order to keep with that curve. And um, yeah, that was the hardest decision. Of, well, imagine being 11, having to choose between Absolutely. these sports that you love. And, and, and I remember the conversation because my dad said, okay, and he kind of gave me the background and said, okay, you know, uh, but, you know your diving coach, your justice coach both spoken to me. You need to, to choose if you want to stay at that level. If you don't want to stay at that level, you can do both for fun. And I said, no, 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 I want to go to the, the Olympic Games. So you wanted you know, to win. Like, that yeah, was, that, was, that the thing. was built inside of yeah, you. That was the thing. That yeah. you actually had to be the best or at least the aim is to be the best. Yeah, I mean, because I guess the Olympic Games thing was running in my head so strongly. Uh, that it, that was more important than just the fun I was having, you yeah. know, with the friends or these different things. So I understood I needed to make that that decision, but I didn't know which one to make. I wanted someone to make it for me. So I said, "Oh, Dad, which one should I do? Should I choose diving or gymnastics?" And and I suppose my dad could have um, been in a position where he could have looked at his program and his you know schedule and, and gone and, and yeah, gone. Okay, well I think you know diving, you know, is uh, you know gymnastics is a bit cheaper. I could maybe go to the pub on Thursday nights if you choose. But he went, okay, well, which one do you enjoy doing? the most yeah. which one is, is most successful which is what parents do yeah isn't it? And, I, and I went I went diving and he said okay well I'll tell your gymnastics coach and you know you can't go back and have any hindsight <laughs> and but you it let was, him do it yeah you? yeah you, yeah. Tell, you tell my yeah, gymnastics yeah, coach yeah he said yeah yeah because I was I was so nervous because I was yeah so I was 11 and it was a hard decision do you think so, it helped though having this diversity because one of the things yeah. that we do do in sport now mm, and you know even early. with my own daughter mm. in track 
is that we try to keep her training very versatile mm. and lots of different choices yeah. you know not to make it too specific mm. too soon because mm. we want longevity yeah. and we want less injury yeah yeah completely I mean it's you know what do they say specialisms for insects isn't it so you've got to try and keep this these options open but I understand high performance sport you know when you when you get into it it's very easy just to start to shut down all these things yeah. so I think just for sanity as well it's to keep your keep your options open so for me it was perfect I mean I had you know an, enough of a variance in the in the training to really enjoy the gymnastics certainly you know from the age of two was the perfect introduction to diving so when I started diving it just before I was nine I was already good that wasn't because I was naturally gifted as some people uh, may have thought you were because, body awareness. yeah seven years of gymnastics acrobatics training yeah. so it was, it was that introduction too and it helped that I could swim and I enjoyed the water and it wasn't I wasn't phased by it you but got yeah some lovely memories about that um that position over there, the life second yeah. position, haven't you? But the yeah. first time you saw an Olympic yeah. medal. Completely. So I was. Um 1988, so I'd, uh, I'd just started uh, diving, but obviously swimming, I guess at that point, was, was my number one sport. I'd watched the, uh, the Seoul Olympic Games and I'd had my, my swimming times next to the world record holders in, 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 in all the events. And I remember watching, like, say, Andy Morehouse win a gold and Andy Jameson win, win a bronze. And Andy Jameson came here to deliver a, uh, a swimming masterclass to Cheltenham Swimming Club, which was, uh, which was based here. And I was a uh, 10 year old at the time. And we all sat in the balcony, we all squashed in, and we listened to Andy talk about the uh, the Seoul Olympic Games, his experience of you know growing up, loving swimming, working hard, what he had training for breakfast Kelly. on the day. Training at Kelly. Training with yeah, me yeah, exactly. Kelly when all he was a those, young lad, young Andy. Those, oh, good stuff. <laughs> and I remember, you know, we had this amazing swimming masterclass, which I can't really remember very much about. I've seen yeah, the photos. But I remember him handing out his Olympic medal. And all of us got to hold it and try it on. It was the first Olympic medal I ever held. And that was 1988. And then fast forward, you know, to 2004, yeah. and I've and I've got mine, and I do the very same thing. You know, I went round. Those were one of the first things I agreed to do was visit as many of the diving clubs in the UK and do exactly the same thing. And if, so, if you had one memory mm. of your day at the mm. Olympics, that very very special day when you win that medal that you've yeah. spent years dreaming about, mm. what is it? Okay, so. Because I remember interviewing yeah. you. And I remember yeah. the palaver with the yeah. was it the Greek divers yeah. Yeah, yeah, and all that of that. Was going two, on? Yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was all at that game. So we were day one, weren't we, of the, of, of the game? So I, I can't. I, I remember our interview because I've watched it back. So this is the weird thing. I hit the water on the last dive, and Peter and I were the last pair to dive. So the first time I looked at the scoreboard was after that dive, and whatever it said in the bottom right-hand corner was the result. And of course, we were fourth in Sydney. You interviewed us then as well, and we were devastated and gutted and frustrated and all those things. And that was that a long four years. Long four when years. When you missed it by, yeah, missed so it by the nail. And of course, two shoulder surgeries. I was given a 30% chance to make it back. So it came back with all this adversity, and we stood there on the poolside in Athens, and we, we gave it our all. We are the last pair to dive, five dives to do, and our final dive, we swim to the side, and we look up at the scoreboard, and I'm waiting and waiting. It seems like an eternity, and then in the bottom right-hand corner, in brackets, the number two comes up, and that means that, you know, because the competition is over, we're the final divers, that's it. And then the most extraordinary thing happens, because it feels like someone reaches into the back of my head and just turns off my short-term memory, because for the next 40 minutes, I can't remember anything through my own eyes. I've just got this amazing whirlwind of emotions that I kept square away until the point that I'm behind the podium and I'm standing next to Pete and we've got our arms behind our back and for some reason I've almost like come round and I can't stop giggling we're both there <laughs> giggling so I go back to that six-year-old who couldn't stop moving couldn't stop you know uh, you know with all this energy and, and giggling and always being in trouble and I regressed back to that that point when the dream was was I want to do that I want to go to the Olympic Games when I was six so 20 years later I'm standing there and I feel like that six-year-old again so I think that's the that's the thing because people say what's it like and I'm just like well it's just it's hard to put words on it but I was there giggling yeah. uncontrollably and, and it's quite serious, Seb Coe's there about to present the medal and I'm like and I have no idea why. This is just this well, most there's so much emotion isn't there? Completely. I mean so much you know is at stake at that particular yeah. time and also obviously what your parents do mm. because they make such big sacrifices mm. you you can reward them I mm. think in a way. That was one mm. of the things that I felt when mm. I won my medal was mm. that you know this was partly yeah. my dad's because he'd made such massive sacrifices. Yeah. I don't know about you but you know when I when I have my Olympic medal I share it with you know audiences from yeah. kids all the way through and, and, and I often say on the back of my Olympic medal there's a list of names. There isn't really is a, there's Greek on the back of mine and stuff but there's a list of names of all those people that have that have been on that journey with you and some of those people obviously mum and dad are right at the top coaches mentors friends people you didn't like who spurred 
spurred you on to be even better. You know, there's a list of names, and I think Doctors. that yeah, exactly, yeah. So you've got all these uh, yeah, all these people who have influenced you. But yeah, right at the top at the moment, Dan. And, and so for me, they'd you know, they'd been on the whole journey. So they came to Atlanta in '96, my first Olympic Games. There was a um, uh, you know the, there was a, a article in the local paper, the uh, Gloucestershire Echo, about my mum and dad getting cable TV so they could watch me. And a few people saw this in the paper, and ultimately then they managed to get accommodation out there. Someone had subsidised the flights and they got out to watch their son his first Olympic Games. They then saved up for the next four years and went out to Sydney, um, you know, be there to support me, to watch me in the heartbreak of coming fourth um, in, the, in, in the Games at the narrowest of margins. And so they were there to support me through that. They then had the <laughs> torment of watching me go through not one but two reconstructive shoulder surgeries. It looked like it was all over but still make it through to Athens. And so they were out there in the, uh, in the aquatic centre when it all unfolded and to, you know, the, the, the and journey did you hear the nails? Well. Right before yeah. you went? <laughs> yeah, well there's 15,000 people to drown it out, so it was like the, the ring on the, uh, on, the, oh. on the bars. So, yeah. Diving is in a pretty good place at the moment. Mm. We had a fantastic summer. Yeah. Um, Tom, is, you, you've been mentoring Tom for mm. many, many years, so mm. a big part still of, of being involved with diving. Mm. How do you feel about our team at the moment? Who do we look yeah. out for? Well, I mean, the great thing from this summer in particular, the Commonwealth Games was, was a superb showing from, you know, the home nations, uh, you know, across all, all the disciplines, but in diving in particular, what was really exciting for me, providing the commentary, was that every single event, you know, I was shouting and screaming, getting excited because we just had strength across all the disciplines. So the springboards, both in men's and women's, yeah. and the platforms and the synchros as well. So it's not just a few divers who it's are expected individual. Yeah, for sure. So in London, it was really tough on Tom, you know, because he was carrying, you know, the the, the hopes of, of British diving. But now we're going into into Rio, or we're halfway through into this cycle, and it's strong across all the disciplines. So it's not just all about, you know, or one diver or, or two or duos. You've got, you know, athletes in, in all yeah. the disciplines. And, and that's great because when your team is that strong, you share that pressure and expectation and you work so well as a unit. So it's very individual. And obviously even the synchro, it's still, you know, very small team. So it's not this big, you know, uh, team element. But the team is really strong. It's working, you know, well together. And um, yeah, it always ebbs and flows, doesn't it? And I think we're just about to, you know, go into okay. a... a, a you know, We're looking good for Rio, for sure. And you mm. were saying to me earlier that you, they've got a training camp out there coming yeah. up, so an opportunity to practice in the environment, yeah. which is really, really good. Yeah. Um, what about young Tom? Obviously, mm. not so young these days, but big no. changes for him recently. Yeah, absolutely. Moved away from Andy, you know, up in mm -hmm. London. Uh, yeah, yeah. Having to make more choices for himself, I suppose. Yeah. And obviously, his parents, particularly his dad, played a huge part. Mm. In Completely. His Completely, Korea. yeah, and you know, it's, it's, the, it's the same story, isn't it? The you know, the, the, the parents of the guardians are there, and and it's a lot of responsibility, you know. And even when they uh, you know leave the nest, you've still you know you're still there, you know, all the way all the way through. Yeah. So yeah, Tom's doing really well. I um, mean, you know, he has lots of uh, lots of challenges, and uh, you know, he's. Uh, I was, I was with him last week actually watching him train and it's great to be, you know, imagine training at the Olympic pool which is where he's based, working with Jane Figueiredo, so you're working really hard and, um, you know, sights are firmly set on, on Rio and, uh, and that's unwavering. And uh, you know he's uh, he's finished his A levels and everything now, so he's got more time to concentrate on diving. But he also needs to do other stuff as well, because as you'll know and I know very well, if you've got all your eggs in one basket, that's okay if it's going well. But then as soon as things start to go a little bit like this, or you yeah. get an injury, and if all you've got is that, your whole life becomes a, a stress and an anxious nightmare. But you need to have these other things to be able to to carve other skills, find other challenges, yeah. and engage with other things. So uh, yeah, Tom's always looking for that balance, and uh, yeah, he's an inspiration every time I get. To, to hang out with him, but he, yeah, he's not so young anymore, is he? No, no, so, yeah. no none of us are so young anymore, yeah. Liam. <laughs> Tell us about Splash, because mm. I mean, I think that helps diving as a sport. Yeah. It's not the traditional way that we see diving, <laughs> but it's bringing it well, to the masses, which must help yeah. youngsters go, oh, I'd like to have a go at that. Uh, completely, yeah. So it's really interesting. If you'd have said to me, I don't know, 10 years ago when uh, when I stood on the podium, oh, by the way, um, diving is going to be a Saturday night entertainment <laughs> TV show, I'd have been like, what? But actually, you know, it worked, didn't it? So there's lots of people out there go, oh yeah, Splash, that was a bit rubbish, didn't it? But I watched it every week because I think it had that like compelling nature because it is high risk and it's, you know, the, you know, the way the celebrities were, were really pushing their boundaries to kind of go out there. And, uh, you know, youngsters are like, so I do lots of uh, school visits and they're always like, oh, you're the mean judge from Splash. But I'm not really mean. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just the way that the, uh, the, the show you're takes tough. place. Yeah, tough, tough or whatever. Tough. Yeah, exactly. But what, what what's happened in, in, in diving is that not only 
our youngsters even you know more excited to get involved, which is wonderful. It's like the you know the guy in his mid forties watches you know Ahmed Jalili dive from the ten meter and thinks. I reckon I've fancy a little bit of 10 meter action. So adult diving has absolutely flourished. Wow. So all you know, centres all yeah. around the UK have had like wait lists for, for adult diving. Who kind of go? Oh, I've I watched Splash. If you know, if they, they can do it, I fancy giving it a go. And people, what a great way to push your comfort zone, though. So mm. if you know, if you're thinking of something that you think you're quite brave, or you fancy something that's like really quite daredevil, uh, you know, it's more more towards the extreme yeah. end. It's uh, it's been uh, you know a, a huge um, increase in numbers across you know both children's and into adult diving. And just finally, we've known each other for a really, really long time, and we were just talking about, you know, maybe it's time for us to have a little Leon. If you're, if you're a parent, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. how would you approach sport? Yeah, I think you, when you're a parent, because yeah, I know yeah, it's you know yeah. something you quite like. To Absolutely. Have. Well, I think we, you know, uh, were so influenced by our parents, aren't we? And uh, you know, my what my mum and dad did for me, and they were faced with a huge challenge. So you know, I wasn't your average, you know, your average baby. I wouldn't sleep, I wouldn't rest. I was hyperactive. I drove them up the wall with all my energy. So they had to do something, and, and, and you know, they made the decision to go. Okay, so we're going to put our our lives pretty much on hold and make sure that both me and, and then my younger sister had the chance to you know to do anything it was it was basically you know my energy and need for this you know uh, channel or release yeah. um, and, and, and I find it in sport but I think I'll, I'll go by the same kind of policy you know if you're in, you know, if, if you're doing enjoying what you're doing whatever that is then you're doing the right thing and rather than forcing or steering or whatever it would just be like well try lots of things and yep. you know if you're enjoying it and it's like you know stimulating you in the right then then go for it so you know I don't know whether uh, you know they'll, they'll find their way into sport or whatever I think that it's, that's the best policy you can't really go wrong if they're the smiles on the face and their eyes are, are lit up with what they're doing then that's all the feedback you need isn't it good advice thank you ever so much it's lovely to see you Pleasure, it's lovely yeah. for you to talk Shall to parents for yeah, sport and I to know. be back here i know exactly in yeah, definitely fancy a dip now <laughs> <laughs> thanks sharon thank you